from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. Well, you mustn't touch me. There's a gun in the drawer here. And I can use it. Why should you use a gun? Come away from that window. Don't touch me. I won't, Katie. I won't touch you. Unless you ask me to. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Lorne Green. There was a time when gunfire was so commonplace in the territory that nobody in New Mexico took much notice of it. Pioneers could remember savage Apaches, Geronimo, Billy the Kid, and the turbulent days of the Lincoln County War. Even at the turn of the century, killers and killings had to be original to get written up in the papers. Katie Macbeth filled the bill, and never pulled a trigger. On the witness stand at her trial, she's reported to have said, I hated that man. I'd do it again if I could. It gave me pleasure to kill him. She was speaking of her dead husband. An editor of the day called her Lady Macbeth of the Rio Grande. The nickname stuck. And that was only the second murder she committed. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Katie Macbeth, by Brainerd Duffield. Our stars, Virginia Gregg and Stephen Markle. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. There's ample proof that a story is best told by someone who, if they didn't witness the event, at the very least was in some way involved in what went on. For that reason... Toby Hibbard's going to pick up right here. I propose to tell the story of how I met up with Katie Macbeth and those two men she killed. One bright spring morning in 1897, I was riding north from Val Verde. I was taking jobs where I could find them, which is why I come there, looking for work. I wasn't meaning to participate in no tragedy. The surroundings was congenial. Big adobe ranch house a long ways out and up against the Magdalena Mountains. They must have seen me miles away. Smoke was rising from the chimney, but nobody came out to meet me. I left my horse in the hay barn and went over to knock at the front door. What's your name, mister? And what are you doing around here? I heard in town you might need a hand to do chores. Name's Toby Hibbard. You be Mr. Alec Macbeth, I suppose? I stepped inside. Hibbard, you say? That's right, sir. I'm a hell of a good worker. I reckon I can use you for a week or two. I'm Alec. Yes, here's my father, Ramsey Macbeth. Howdy, young fella. That's my wife, Katerina. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Hibbert. You've had a long ride. Could I call you some coffee? Never mind all that. Well, I thought the young man li- like our hot breakfast. If he wants some grub, he can get it at the bunkhouse. I bunk only thought that... I'll do the thinking. Guitar's out there sweeping up. She's my cook. Guitar will tell you what needs doing. She'll show you where to bed down and feed you at mealtime. Yes, sir. Tell him he won't have no call to come to the house. But if he does, he should go around the back way. That's right. I keep the front door bolted. Yes, sir. The reason I'm short of hands is the rains have busted the dam at my mill's other side of the mountain. Men are all out making repairs. I'm going up there this morning to supervise, and I may be gone a while. But I'll be here all the time, watching out for things. Uh, yes, sir, I understand. If you look through this window, you can see the bunkhouse beyond that row of trees. Yes, ma'am. I see it. Thank you kindly. Let him be, Katie. He'll find his way. All you got to do, young fellow, is tend to your business and don't get smart at it. There you go. I'll let you out the way you come in. Katie Macbeth. I could tell from how she walked across the room that the lady had a warm disposition. Not a beauty, but handsome with shining black eyes. I should have left right then. But I didn't. I was wrecking the yard when I saw Alec Macbeth ride off toward the mountain. 
Later, his father rode in the opposite direction. While I stood wondering, long come guitar with a cup of wine to quench my thirst. Drink this, Toby. You drink. And come sit on this bench where it's shady. Thanks, guitar. You sure know how to make it comfortable for a man. You bet your life. There. You feel good now, Toby? Real good. How could I help it? I've been waiting, waiting for a cowboy like you. Just like me? You need someone to mush your curly hair and keep you warm at night. Where did the old man go off to? All duded up? Oh, he's gone to a name day party for a friend of his. Told me not to wait supper for him. He's an old timer. Must be near 80. He already made it to 83. You look out for him, Toby. He's a mean one. That son of his looks ornery, too. Where did he ever find a wife like her? He was married 15 years to the first one. Now five more years to Katarina. Unlucky both times. No children, huh? It is to be pity she never have no babies. Those men never let her forget. <laughs> Don't you like her? She's such a fine lady. Her father was a Basque sheep herder with a Spanish blood. Not like me. You like her, Toby? Well, you know, she's good looking. She ain't hiding it. Hey, there she is, sitting at the window. She always sits at the window. Or else she walking back and forth inside the empty house. Yeah, I gotta talk to her. Ay, amigo, where are you going? Son of a gun, you're not supposed to go up there, Toby! You're gonna get yourself in big trouble, Toby. Kids' winter jackets and coats. Terrific values from Sears. Winter? Why, it's summer. Grass growing, fish jumping, kids out having fun. Don't look now, but winter's coming. And Sears will help you keep you warm with boys' and girls' jackets and coats. We've got a wide assortment in sizes from tots to teens. Come in now, because summer's the time when jacket and coat selection is great. Come winter, I'll be glad I did. Here are more super values from Sears. We start $100 off the price of our Craftsman 10-inch table and radio saws. Now only $279.95 each. And they saw cross cuts, bevels, and more. Sears Best Table Saw includes leg set, two extensions, and one horsepower motor. The radio saw has a one and a half horsepower motor and a single lever miter arm control. Hurry! Your choice, Sears 10-inch table or radio saw. Only $279.95 till July 21st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. As basic and colorful rustling leaves are the yearly harvest. That's fall fashion basics from Sears. Reap a wealth of long sleeve shirts in three collar styles. Small rounded, pointed, or mandarin band collars. In six autumn colors, only $12 each. Look forward to fall and tense to fit. Proportion for tiny, typical, or tall figures. In five shades, just $14 a pair. Fall fashion basics. Shirts and pants that fit. In Mrs. Sizes from the sportswear department. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The steps to tragedy are ordinary. A man might be going anywhere for a stroll, to fetch a cool drink of water, to see a friend. Toby didn't know what would happen to him as he walked toward the closed door. It seemed to me that Katie Macbeth signaled me with her eyes, maybe even with a gesture of her hand. I heard guitar call me, but it's like I was being pulled toward the house. Next thing I knew, I was upstairs, knocking on Katie's door. What do you want? Ah, uh, well, I, uh, I've something to ask you, ma'am. Can I come in for a minute? I'm not telling me. What do you want? I've come to ask you if you've got some book I could read. <laughs> I'm afraid I have no books. I don't read them. Doggone, I'll get bored if I don't have something. Why should you get bored? Why should I? I'm young and restless, and it's a lonesome life. Sometimes it makes me despair. You should get married and settle down. Ah, that's easy said, ma'am. Who'd want to marry me? Got a red cent in my britches. There are nice church-going girls in town. I only meet the dance all kind. They're a poor lot and got no education. How can you expect them to know anything about love? Love? You talk mighty fine and ambitious for a cow hunt. Sure, I'm ambitious. I mean to own my own spread one day. 
They're going to make a state out of all this, put it in the Union. Country's changing, got to change with it. I'll amount to something yet. Why, Toby Hebert, you're ambitious. I never heard the like of you. Well, look now, I'd like to come and talk to you when you've got time. <laughs> I've always had more of that than anything else. If you don't mind my saying so, you'd be a comfort to a man who had any feelings. My land. Almost appears they keep you in a cage like a bird. My heart is sad for you. What are you talking to me about your heart for? I can't see it's any of your business, I feel. I guess you better scatter along now, Toby. No, please, ma'am. Katie, I, I know, I see. Your life's no better than mine. You're lonely, too. What have you come here for? Well, you mustn't touch me. There's a gun in the drawer here. And I can use it. Why should you use a gun? Come away from that window. Don't touch me. I won't, Katie. I won't touch you. Unless you ask me to. She looked at me funny when I said that. Like maybe I'd opened up a subject she'd been keeping secret. Then, like she was doing it in a dream, she put down the gun and walked over to me. She looked at me, studied me, you might say. Her head was a little to one side, I remember, as though she was trying to figure something out. Then she closed her eyes. She was trembling. Just a little as bit. No. What? No. Touch me. together, me and Katie. It's easy now to say how quick it happened. Now, if I wasn't so interested in a pretty lady's complimentary manner, I'd have kept my eyes open. I tried to understand that look she gave me before she made a decision, but I didn't. So we spent that whole day upstairs together, me and Katie. And one thing I found out, there was something funny about her. Something black boiling up inside her. You go back to the bunkhouse. Get away from here. Why? My father-in-law will be coming home. He'll lock up the door. He must be peculiar if he thinks a door can keep me out. They built a porch with pillars on it, didn't they? He'd find out about us. Maybe you'd better be moving your camp somewhere else. Better hadn't. Not when I found myself a woman like you. Oh, then go off me. Do what I tell you before it's too late. Tomorrow morning early, you'd better pack up. And leave. No, Katie. I ain't gonna go. Not yet a while. For a whole week, I took my chances and spent every night till daybreak with Katie Macbeth. All that time, Guitar cooked my meals and seldom spoke a word. But she must have told on us. Because one morning, I went sliding quietly down, and Ramsey was waiting on the porch with a bullwhip in his hand. Where you been, you ring-tailed vermin? Wherever I've been, I ain't there now. You got onto the wrong side of the wagon, tongue. Up on that soft pillage with my daughter-in-law. You can't undo what's done. I'll show you what I can do. I'll show you. Don't. Hold off, old man. Crawl on your knees. Let him go. We haven't done anything wrong. Nothing wrong, you little tramp. I'm going to cut the hide off his bones. Oh, leave him be. You're leaving me. The strength of that old man. I couldn't get near him. He cut me bad. Afterwards, I went crawling up the hillside and lay there, near to dying. Along towards nightfall, Katara took that old man in supper beside me, pinto beans. I saw through the window how Katie stirred it with her own hands and served it to him. By morning, he was dead. Then she stepped out on the porch and started calling. Toby, do you hear my voice? Are you up there, Toby? You can come back to me now. When I heard old Ramsey Macbeth was dead, I thought I'd get on my horse and go quick, but Katie made me stay while he was given a pious burial. A message got sent notifying her husband, Alec, up in the mountains, but weeks went by and he didn't return, so I hung around some more. Katie was wild with love. Not letting me out of her sight for a minute. And plenty of wine from the cellar was drunk. When it got too hot indoors, we put a feather bed under the apple trees and stretched out there. I can't remember ever being so happy. Mm. You ought to be. It was you that did all the coaxing. <laughs> I didn't want to love you, Toby. You're talking like a fool. What's the matter, my darling one? Tell me. 
What's to tell? There's Alec, your law-abiding husband. He'll be home any day now, and what'll happen to me? I'll go back to the bunkhouse and watch your lamp going out up in the bedroom. How do you think I'll feel? You mean you'd be jealous? How can I help thinking about it? Or else, your husband's probably been told everything by now. If that's so, it won't be a matter of days before i got to saddle my horse. If he's been told, there's only one person that could be spreading stories, and that's Kutera. time he's done, there won't be a sign of me for miles around. No, Toby. It won't happen. I can't leave unless you stay here with me. I can't expect you to love me forever. There's no hope of us ever getting married. Help me. The dogs are barking out back. It wouldn't be him coming home. No, they know Alec. He stopped the racket by the time it was him. Sometime soon, he'll be here. And that'll be a sorry day for him. Love has a way of screening out everything else. It's like a narcotic or a punch in the jaw. It takes over your mind and your body and makes your brain stop functioning. So Katie and Toby, full of nothing but their love for one another, missed hearing something. They didn't hear the ranch watchdogs when they stopped barking. Toby, Toby, wake up now. Huh? What are you doing? Leave me go. It's him. Alec, he's home. Listen. Home? He's home? It's awful still. I don't hear nothing. The dogs were barking and they stopped. I thought I was screaming. Then I heard the iron lock and the kitchen door. He's there now on the stairs outside this room. Dear God, Katie, what are we going to do? Get up. Get over on, on the porch roof. And don't go too far. You sure he's there? Yes, I am very sure. Get out on the roof. Wait till I call you. I will. I'm going. Who is it? Who's there? It's me, your husband. Is that you, Alex? Can't you walk in? Katie, you alone? Oh, you got a candle. Put it on the table. How are you? I'm all right. Why did you come back in the middle of the night? I heard you buried my father. Weeks ago. He died, and so he was buried. A fine thing to do while I was going away. It had to be done, Alec. Why did you stay so long? I was 50 miles off on the far side of the mountain making a deal for timber. Did you make a bargain, Alec? I did. Now, have you been passing the time here? You know the lot of pleasure I lead. Fancy dress parties every week, going to the theater. You don't show any pleasure in seeing me. Well, we're not young anymore. You want me to jump out of bed and kiss you? Of course I'm pleased you're home. I heard a thing or two about you and your pleasures. Katerina, we're going to talk about that right now. Katerina isn't frightened of you anymore. Word gets around. You should have been more careful. I won't put up with your abuse. I know the way you've been carrying on. If you know, you better tell me. You've got a lover, ain't you? High old doings while I've been gone. That's all I want to hear. I'm getting out of bed. We'll settle this. Where is he? I'm going to horsewhip that weasel. I'm going to beat him within an inch of his life. He's had too much of that already. Toby, come in. Come in here, Toby. Well, here he is. How do you like my darling? Ain't he handsome, though? Look how I kiss him. How do you like that, Alex? See how I do it? Ain't it beautiful? Take your hands off my wife. Oh, what's wrong? Don't you like it? You're my wife! Oh. Oh. So that's how it is. Hit me, will you? I was only waiting for that. Now it's your turn. Katie, hey, what what you're doing? He's hit his head. We wasted enough time with him and kneel on him, hold him. Put your hands around his throat and squeeze. You wouldn't have me kill him. Oh, wouldn't I? Not a teacher to creep up on your wife like a thief and spy on her. Let me up. Help! Murder! I was just pinning his two arms, holding him. I looked up to see Katie with a candlestick in her hand. And then he was dead. No, it's all over. He's done for, all right. I never thought I'd be in a thing like this. Well, you're in it now. Cold-blooded murder. You've got no cause for fear. You planned this, didn't you? You've been planning this right along. I hated him. I'd do it again if I could. Did you think I'd let him come between us? Don't you feel nothing? Look at him. 
laying there with his eyeballs white and staring. What kind of a woman are you? What kind of coward did you turn out to be? Don't stand there shaking. Go to the kitchen and fetch me water and rags. We've got to wash away these stains before the sun comes up. This won't be washed away. And when that's done, there's work for you to do. You'll need a shovel to dig his grave. Where? Where can we do that? In the wine cellar. It will toughen those dainty hands of yours. I can. You can, and you will. They'll wonder what happened. They'll be searching for him. Oh, no. Not here, they won't. We'll turn his horse loose on the mountain. They'll think he fell in the ravine. Katara, what about her? Don't worry. She's still asleep. Nobody heard him coming back. Nobody saw him but us. I won't go through with this. I'm going sick. All in my head and stomach. That's your lookout. You'll soon get over it. What if they search the cellar and find him there? They won't. We'll bury him deep. So deep, nobody will be able to find him. Not till the resurrection day. Lorne Green again with the concluding act of Katie Macbeth. I wished I'd never gone to that place and made up with her. But there wasn't no turning back. The disappearance of her husband, Alec, naturally caused considerable speculation in the vicinity. But Katie turned his horse loose above the ravine. He was gone, and that was that. When the ranch hands came back from the mill, I was hired as the new foreman to boss them. Katie never went into town herself. But Katara had to go and buy supplies, and she was the one who spread the scandalous rumors about it. Months went by, then another. Pretty soon it was plain to see there was a baby on the way. It was a kind of secret that couldn't be kept. But Katie was so crazy with love, she was downright glad about it. It's what I've been hoping for, Toby, darling. Don't you know what it means for us? No, I don't know what it means. But I'd have a son and heir. The property will be ours, then no mistake. It's a mistake, all right. All that grazing and timberland. You'll be a rancher like you always wanted to be. And own the finest spread west of the Rio Grande. You must be plum loco if you think those upright territory folks will let us get away with it. Great Lord, what right have they got to go poking into our business? I'm the lawful wife of my legal husband, and I won't let this ranch go to rock and ruin. I won't let it. Nobody dare take this land away from us. When we get married, you'll have the running of it free and clear, so why put on his sad face about it? I can't help thinking back, can I? You should, Toby. I want you to. I want you to forget all about him. How can I? How can I forget when I still got the calluses on my hands from using the spade and crowbar in the cellar? You quit your brooding and stay up out of there. You go down there too often, Toby. I know what's ailing you. You go down to the cellar to drink. Sure I do. Why shouldn't I? You've been drinking today, haven't you? I'm not drinking. I'm drunk. Can you blame me? I can't stand much more of this kind of life. You stay out of that cellar. You hear me? You're selfish, Toby. You are always thinking of yourself. No, Katie Dowling, I'm not thinking of myself. That's not the point. All I'm thinking is that we won't ever be as happy together as we might have been. Why not? Why should not we be happy together? Because loving you the way I do, I want you to be respected like a real lady would be. Everybody's so mean and envious. They'll be remembering your husband, Alec, and saying wicked things about us. What do I care if they do? You're the one who keeps brooding about Alec. You're the one. Forget him. Forget him forever. But how could I do that? What we'd done was on my conscience day and night. What happened after that was bound to happen. I knew Guitara had a tongue in her head and wasn't afraid to use it. And I knew there was going to be a clash between the two women. Yet it surprised me when it came. A night or so later, I was passing the little bunkhouse where Guitara lived and I heard their voices through the open window. Look at the Madonna up on my wall with the candle burning. I speak to Our Lady. Every day she answers my question. And give me sign. She told me all about the plans you make for me. What plans? What are you talking about, Kitara? You know very well what you're planning to do. But I'm going to have you arrested, you dirt, you devil. And I have other ways of knowing what you do. Look. Look at these cards. See how I can read them. They tell me things, too. 
the cards are truthful and do not lie. I shall sir. Good. Three cards here. Four cards there. Now, speak my treaties and give us news of the future. Tell us who is going to betray us. Look, Katie, you turn up the card. All right. I will. I do. There. Ah, you see, it's the Queen of Spades. Now I turn one. The Ace of Spades. That means death. What did I tell you? I read it clearly now. Me first, then you. For both of us, death. What is the matter with you? I tell you, what is the matter with me, Katarina? I was sick in my bed a week ago. And you brought me soup, flavored with bitter herbs, didn't you? Yes, I did. I wanted you to get well. But I tell you, I feel much worse since the day you bring me that. Ever since I am sick and dying from the food you bring me. I feel bad all the day. But now I have a stop eating the broth and the medicina. So you can't hurt me anymore. Is he? No, I don't see. You're accusing me of putting poison in your food. Yes, senor. Yes, I am. I know you very well. You are the one that do it to me. That you saw the old man Ramsey. I remember that night and what you did to him. You are trying to treat me the same way. You stop your mouth, you foolish girl, before I lose my temper with you. And I think I know about your husband, Alex, too. What you and Toby do to him. You are a liar, Gitara, and you know it. Cut it out, you two. The hands can hear you yelling all the way to the bunkhouse. Let him hear. I don't care. I sent for the sheriff. Sheriff Gow is my good friend in town. I told him all about it. He will be coming soon, tomorrow or today, to help me. He will arrest you, Katarina. You stupid girl. Do you dare to make trouble for me? I will do something to stop your lying tongue. Katie, don't talk like that. Look at me, Toby. See how thin I have been growing. And look at her. How she swell out in front. She's a devil, that one. I see the devil in her eyes when she comes to see me. You have predicted your own death, Kitara. First you, then me. Is that what you said? Is the way she look at me? Like a wild animal. She has wild, stubborn blood. Are you afraid of me? Uh, well, you uh, could be, Kitara. For your gossiping tongue is going to cost you your uh, love. Don't you frighten me. If you frighten me, I will cry. Lie back on your bed, Kitara. Do as I say. No. I don't want to do that. What are you going to do? Let me go. Lay down. Toby, come on. Hold her straight and see she does not struggle. No, Katie, we mustn't do this. Hand me that pillow. Cover her face. Stop me. Cover her face. There. Here. Let me help you. I can see you through the window. Stop what you're doing at once. It's here, go. You're under arrest, both of you, on a charge of attempted murder. Are you all right, Guitar? Oh, I'm all right. Thank God. They'd never planned for two prisoners to be in the jail at the same time, much less one a man and the other a woman. So they put me in the cell behind bars and... Katie stayed in an open place between me and the door, which was kept locked. They brought her a cot and a mattress, better than what I was using, but harsher than what she was used to. She seemed to spend her time thinking, staring out the window, then turning suddenly to me, eyes wide, hands over her belly, and she'd smile like she knew a secret, something that kept her apart from every other person and thing. Then, this one day... Sheriff Gow come into where we was, and there was something about him. You could tell the way he walked in that made me shudder. I just knew it was over. I've been asking around about Ramsey and Alec Macbeth. You know anything about where they might be, ma'am? I have no idea. How about you, Toby? No. I don't know. 
Guitara told me a lot about what's been going on out there at the Macbeth Ranch. Anything to what she said about you two? Nothing. About us? Me and her? I gotta tell you, Toby, I suspect Ramsey and Alec was murdered. And I suspect if you didn't do the actual deed, you was an accomplice. In the law, it's the same. You hang. He doesn't know anything about it. If you help me, Toby, then maybe I can help you. I can't say what exactly prompted me to do what I'd done. The Lord knows how much I loved her. But my own conscience, and I'd begun to think I didn't have one. My own conscience prompted me on, and there I was, talking away a while a minute, talking and talking. I don't believe it's going to be hard to prove my suspicion that they was murdered. Nobody was murdered. Katie, can't you see the game is up? They'll find out the truth now. Be silent. No. I want to confess everything and clear my conscience once and for all. Katie, I advise you to do the same. Look in a wine cellar, Sheriff. You'll find Alec's body where I buried him. What do you say to that, ma'am? I say if Toby wants to confess, then I cannot deny it. Yes, I killed Alec. I killed them both. Why'd you do it, Katie? I did it for him, for Toby. I committed two murders for him. And this is how he thanks. Katie, I'm sorry I couldn't help myself. I've been worried to death. Walking about in a daze. Now I've gone all to pieces. What more can I say? You've said everything already. They'll separate us now for good. Is that what you wanted, Toby? Do you want to prove that I was to blame for what happened? Don't bother. I know what to think of myself. You don't know anything, Katie. Or you wouldn't look at me that way. If you knew what's going on inside of me, have some pity. I'm going crazy. I've already forgiven you for what you made me do. If only we could bring back the past. I'd love you as I never loved you before. Are you crying? Don't think that these tears are on your account. No, Toby, they are not. I'm not crying on your account, Toby. It's just, I think, what might have been with us. You probably all know what happened next. It was in the papers at the time. How they dug deep in the wine cellar and found Alec's body. The arrest of Katie Macbeth for murder got nationwide attention. The trial was moved up to Albuquerque to make sure proper justice would be done. There were some unkind words written about me. Toby Hibbert. People said it was wrong for me to turn state's evidence and testify against a woman. But I couldn't see where I'd done anything so wrong. When I went to that ranch, I never intended to commit any murders. All I did was entirely at her suggestion, because I loved her. <laughs> Funny thing. During those days, I aroused more general sympathy than she did. At her trial, Katie showed no sign of emotion. She appeared the most cool and unconcerned person in court. Except for that one moment on the witness stand when she spoke about Alec. I hated that man. I'd do it again if I could. It gave me pleasure to kill him. When she said that, the jury made up its mind to bring in a guilty verdict. Katie was condemned to die on the gallows, but she never got there. She sent for me to come visit with her in the prison hospital where she'd given premature birth to a son. When they handed her the newborn child, Katie said, No, take him away. And turned her face to the wall. When she looked up again, I was there by her bed. Toby. Toby. Hello, Katie. How do you feel? Not very well. It was a difficult birth. I'm afraid I'm still very weak. I'm sorry to hear that. Did you see the boy? No, I didn't want to see him. I told them to take him away. My love for the baby's father hasn't transmitted to the child. I love no one, not even myself. You're still angry with me, then? 
How could I help not being angry? But you sent for me. I was told you wanted to see me. Yes. Yes, I thought I did. I tried to tell myself. I don't love Toby anymore. But now when I look at you, the passion I felt is stronger than ever. And it makes you happy to see me again? Yes. But what is the good of this sort of meeting? What joy is it to see each other after all the torture I've gone through? We do have some happy memories. Don't forget, Katie, how we used to pass the long summer nights together under the apple trees. I remember very well. (laughs) Don't you want to know about the ranch? They're deeding the property to Sheriff Gow as trustee, and he'll bring up your son, who will be the sole heir to the spread. That makes no difference to me now. You're going to be all right, Katie. I'm going to die. Let me kiss you? No. No, don't do that, please. I don't think I have this strength. Poor Katie. Yes. Yes, please kiss me, Toby. Once more. There. I do love you, Toby. In spite of everything. And now you must go. I'm sorry, Phil. Very poorly. Whatever you say. But we've seen each other once again, haven't we, darling Katie? Yes, we have. Thank you for coming, Toby. Goodbye, then. Goodbye, dear Toby. An hour later, Katie had a relapse. Internal bleeding began. They couldn't stop it. It didn't take her very long to die. And so the citizens of the territory of New Mexico are cheated out of a public execution. That's my story, then. And the story of Katie Macbeth, a handsome, passionate gal who brightened my days and nights back in 1897. She's been gone a while now, but I don't have any reason to forget her. I never will. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Katie Macbeth was written by Brainerd Duffield, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Virginia Gregg and Stephen Markle. Featured in the cast were Marvin Miller, Peggy Weber, and Howard Culver. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Music 103, 24 hours a day. KMO XFM, St. Louis. Number two man in the Department of Energy is quitting. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. Deputy Secretary of Energy John O'Leary says he has submitted his resignation and wants it to take effect September 4th. A report from Nelson Benton in Washington. O'Leary, who along with Energy Secretary Schlesinger has come under criticism for handling of the developing energy crisis, said he bears no hostility in leaving the job. My plans were made long before the current uh, spout of rumors that they wanted me out was made, and indeed I informed them uh, in late in June 22nd, and we noticed that the great uh, uh, outpouring of rumors that they wanted my head has been since then. There's no rancor at all. It's just that I'm tired. It's been a long, hard drive, and uh, I don't have the stamina that I did when I was uh, up here. O'Leary spoke with reporters on his return from a meeting with governors at the National Governors Conference in Louisville. Sources said his resignation had been planned, that the White House did not request it. The White House did not respond to CBS News queries about the O'Leary resignation. Nelson Benton, CBS News, Washington.
President Carter's domestic summit on energy and the economy continued at Camp David today. The president met with 22 members of Congress. House Speaker Thomas O'Neill said the group agreed it is time to give the president standby power to ration gasoline. O'Neill also said there was general agreement on the need for conservation and synthetic fuel development. Senator Edward Kennedy today commented on President Carter's efforts to deal with the energy crisis. In Boston, Kennedy said Congress should respond to meaningful proposals from the administration. I think the Congress will react very positively with for bold leadership. The American people are expecting it. They're entitled to it. And I think uh, he's trying to give a, uh, a great deal of uh, final thought as to the proposals that they're going to uh, make. We just can't do with Band-Aid solutions anymore. Kennedy called the energy crisis the most critical problem facing this nation. He said without strong leadership, things could get as bad as the Depression of the 30s. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee today began hearings under the SALT II Treaty. Secretary of State Vance warned the senators against any realistic hope of shifting the bargain more in favor of the United States through the addition of amendments and reservations. Several senators have said they intend to push for amendments. The treaty would limit the strategic missiles and bombers deployed by the United States and the Soviet Union through 1985. Voyager 2 today made its flyby of the planet Jupiter. Scientists have lots of pictures to study, relayed back to Earth from the area around the giant planet. Among them, pictures of the moon Europa. They show a green and white body, one which scientists say looks as if something crunched it with an eggshell. A federal judge in Indianapolis has ordered the busing of 6,100 black inner-city pupils to suburban schools this fall. Several suburban school districts involved have indicated they will appeal the order. Many of the nation's food stores report the independent trucker strike has cut into their supplies of fresh fruits, vegetables, meats, and other foods. About 17% of those surveyed report abnormally low supplies. To sing with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. It's just like you're in another world. Like you're in heaven. To me, it feels like you're part of a, some kind of a rolling machine that feels like if you could keep on singing, you'd, just, you'd move something. Oh, it's wonderful. You just want to sing forever. It's a really privilege I can think of. It's just so fun. I love the singing. I love the words. I love the music. I love the music. I'm Spencer Kennard, inviting you to listen for our special 50th anniversary broadcast, July 15th, on most of these CBS radio network stations. Cuba today promised to release 610 prisoners who had been accused of atrocities during the Cuban Revolution. The move should leave the country without any political prisoners. The announcement came in Havana at a government-sponsored news conference. It was made by Jorge Robreco Lore, a leader of the Cuban exile community. He had gone